You know, so after, you know, I moved on from here and started working as our professional myself, we just hung out. I mean, she watched my sister go. We went to wrestling. We, we drove out to see her mom. We saw concerts everywhere. And it, as you were talking, I just made me think of stories of some of those concerts we went to. So we saw Al Green at Paramount Theater mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and over in Oakland. And I remember it was like, uh, she was like to the right of me here. And Al Green kept coming out down the aisle with these white roses. And he had them out, and people just swarmed the aisles. I, see, I could see Herb was getting like, itchy. He was like, one of those roses. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, you gonna know, like plow through on this entire island trying to get one? She's like, no, nah, nah, I won't do it. And so he does it like two times. He comes out down the house singing, he's handing these roses out. And then we're like, he won't do it again. And they're like, I'm not gonna go. So it's like, yeah, I think David was there too. But it was like, she, I just know she was to the right. So once again, Al Green goes out and does it. I look, and Herb is gone. She goes, <laughs> out of the house. And he runs out of roses right as he gets to oh. Herb. But she came back. She's like, oh, I was like, I touched him, though. <laughs> he turns around. But, uh, yeah, I said, you were saying that. I remember her. Just, I didn't know she could move that. <laughs> Straight up the aisle. But uh, yeah, I was uh, Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we saw um, the last show we saw was earlier this this year, King Crimson. We mm -hmm. saw them like three times together. Mm -hmm. So when we saw Isaac Hayes, we saw Nina Simone together, we saw King, Portishead, mm -hmm. like uh, God, and you know just all the road trips too. I mean, her her mom became part of our crew, so you know when we go watch wrestling pay per views in, in Southern California. I mean, you met her mom. Mm. She's like the sweetest, nicest lady. And, and of we, course, you recognize her. Yeah, right. <laughs> but she was, uh, whenever we go out there, we watch some crazy matches, barbed wire exploding ring matches and stuff. <laughs> and her mom would be like, well, did you get me a ticket? And she's like, mom, uh, it's kind of violent. You sure you <laughs> He looked at her mom's like, oh, I want to hang out with you guys. So we ended up taking her mom to a lot of these things, too. But, uh, <laughs> It was, that's the part I miss the most. I mean, my friends. I mean, all those years, you know, I, I was at Comic Con, so my art, she was always there. Yeah. She always was, had good advice. And she was never, if, if you screwed something up, she was never, she never slapped your wrist. She kind of just reset and wrote, let me show you another way to do that. Or, you know what, let's try that again. You know, uh, here's a better way to do it. And I think that's why I loved her. I mean, when when I started here, you know, the, I think Mark Fields was, was, was doing a press, and Ken Garrett was doing the silk screen back there. And they could get snippy if you were doing something right, but not her. So I, I kind of gravitated to her, and it just worked out well. We became really good friends. So, you know, it, I'm glad I got to spend time with her, you know, right when they opened up the world again after the, the pandemic. I wish we had more time, but you know, I'm I'm so happy she gets to be with her mom because she, her mom was her best friend. Diana Katz was, was awesome, and she so missed her when she passed. We all did, mm -hmm. but she gets to be with her right now. With the world being the way it is, it's it's perfect timing for her. Yeah, she was too sweet to be here. Uh, we call her Herb, and yeah. her mother we call her Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his name, you know, she was named after Claudia Cardinale. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. So, so I'll just forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know why she didn't go by Claudia? Herb? Oh, yeah. uh, Claudia, she said, she would say Claudia in Latin is the clumsy one. <laughs> <laughs> And she said, I'm not. And so she had picked up Herb. Where did Herb come from? <laughs> I actually, uh, one of her friends from college contacted me on Facebook. And I guess she and a group of 
maybe there was like three or four of them yeah. would go uh they were up at sonoma state then i think and um they would do things like go skinny dipping and mm -hmm. they were very like back to nature but <laughs> herb was the one who uh like if anybody got sick or got hurt she knew like what herb or natural remedy to to help them and so that's uh they started calling her herb she was still practicing her topless. She was still going to the Ali Akbar College. Yeah. She had been there for years and years. I heard her play a few times, but she'd go in and close the door. And we would hear her. It was just weird. Yeah, I knew um, Tuesdays she'd bring them to work because she would try to get out of here right on time to get across the bridge to get there by six. So. And this is not just for me, this is actually from a lot of the people that she And this is one of the things we're kind of mourning, is what she did as a chromist. She's the best there. She's the best of that period of time. Mm -hmm. Because chromism is something that was done in the 20s and before. Herb came along, David and she, they were, that's what they were doing. But she was beyond anybody in the world who was doing that. And she stood in the background at that time and just did her work. She could draw anything. Oh, she could draw. And she can look at a piece and just pick out all of the 12 colors that would make a thousand colors. When and I was no, proofing I'm, here, pardon? I would be proofing a print and I'd be like, I'd just, David would kind of do this. Yoda thing on me. He's like, okay, you need to eat in front of your print. You need to drink in front of your print. You need to look at your print and spend all this time in front of your print. And then still I would be bashing my head up against the wall and I couldn't get the colors quite right. And I'd be like, that's when I knew I had to go to Herb. So I would go to Herb and then Herb would do this, the signature Herb move. She would look at it and kind of tilt her head and then she'd go like this. And she'd be like, oh yeah, two and a half percent more yellow in the greens. <laughs> and that would be it. And that was like, that was such a and good... And it would work. And it would work without fail. That's a it's very, really... very rare thing. It is. I mean, basically, it was dropped as an industrial thing because photomechanical reproduction came along. She was doing what high-end camera people were doing. Just with her brain. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Also, I have one other story to tell about Herb, which is how she saved me. Uh, and the fact that I'm still in the art world here in the Bay Area. Uh, we were doing some prints for the San Francisco Arts Commission Gallery with this noted photographer um, who I won't name, but he had just gotten taken on by Magnum, um, which is a really big deal in the photo world. And he had given me 24 Polaroids, so one of a kind photographs, that he had taken in Greece and had immigrants write their immigration story on in pen on the Polaroids. So they were totally irreplaceable. And I went and got them from his studio and he's like, do you need a transmission form or like so something just to say that you have them? And I remember I wrote this note and I, I still have the note today. I got it back and says, uh, dear artist, uh, I promise not to lose your photographs. I will take good care of them, no lying. And <clears throat> I scanned them in, I put them somewhere, <laughs> then I went to Burning Man. And this is like, uh, this is a little nested story, there's a story about another story that includes David too. David loved and hated it that a bunch of us went to Burning Man. He loved it, uh, well he hated it because he's like, what the hell, like that is just, <laughs> the, 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 he couldn't see any value in like, why would you want to do that? And he loved it is because we were all gone. <laughs> and he could have the entire shop to himself for 10 days. Um, so I went to Burning Man and completely forgot where I put them. And I came back and I was just like, okay, I need to get the photographs. I'm like, great. And I start looking for them. I'm like, oh, that's weird. And I'm like, I wonder if I threw them away. And it was like enough time that the industrial trash hadn't come. So I'm digging through the trash thing. And a week goes by, and I'm starting to make up stories to the artist about, okay, no, I've got to, I just need a little more time for color proofing, <laughs> so I'm sweating. And he's like, okay, we know that like, they, they're valued at like, 
I, I don't know, they're, they're valued at like $50,000 a piece. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I was doing the math in my head, I'm like, okay. <laughs> And <clears throat> I couldn't find them anywhere. And I spent entire work days here, unpaid, looking for the photographs, doing nothing else besides just sweating and looking for these one-of-a-kind things. And David took me aside one day and he's like, you know, here's what you need to do is talk to Herb and have Herb bring it up in her prayer group to find the photos for you. And I was ready to do anything at this point <laughs> that was sort of like my brain and I'm like that's not gonna help but okay so I, I took her beside said herb this is what well, she knew what was going on but I'm like do you think you guys could bring this up in your prayer group she said sure and I said look I don't like I, I was I don't know how old I was then 28 I was like I didn't have a lot of money but I'm like I will write a donation check to the prayer group if uh, if you guys could help me I mean I'll write it anyway even if you don't help me but I will put my money where my mouth is. She's like, okay, prayer group meeting's on Wednesday. I go home Wednesday night. I have a dream about where the photographs are. I come in first thing in the morning. I go right to where they were. I open it up, and that's where they were. Wow. And the next thing I did is I wrote the check. <laughs> <laughs> and what had happened... You know, the uh, Herb's uh, spiritual connections meshed really interestingly with her interest in professional wrestling. I mean, that was, um, that was the, the lesson that um, the world is wide. And um, Herb was a devotee of um, Yogananda and, um, and I just had a great affinity for it. And when I had some medical problems, um, my doctor, Dr. Ganatra, a woman had a necklace around her neck and it had the symbol for the Self-Realization Fellowship and I knew I was in Herb's hands. I'm uh, Jeff Kelly. For those of you who may not know, I'm married to Honolulu. And <clears throat> this is a, an email that Herb wrote to me um, around the time that we were all in Washington, which I guess was last November, because Hung has a big show at the National Portrait Gallery. <clears throat> and Herb and uh, everybody from here came there. And because she had her mask on, she I don't, I don't exactly know why she wanted to be away from the, the group, but when the, when the crowd was meeting and everything, she was up looking at the show. So a couple of days later, she wrote me the following thing. I won't read the whole thing, because it's, but this paragraph is pretty good. I saw the show a couple of hours before the event. As I was looking at the Dorothea Lang paintings up close, the magnitude of who Hung is struck me like a lightning bolt. The paintings are on a par with Monet and the Impressionists and the other great artists of history. I was humbled and cried to think I never realized this before and how having the chance to work with her was like being able to work with one of those great masters. It was a life-changing experience and a lesson in humility for me I'm so very glad I had the opportunity to see it. Best her. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't say that Herb is praising my wife's work. Uh, and that's part of this. But what impressed me about what Herb wrote is that it was a lot of, well, I felt, sim in a, I felt similarly as Hong's husband. And what impressed me was uh, the ability to change your mind late in life or to realize something about yourself by looking at someone else's work and 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 to have a realization that everything you thought you knew all of your career when you had an opportunity to see it just from a little distance it changed the humility and the grace required to to say you know i've been working with her for years but i never saw this before 
and I cried about it when I did. And I, you know, I had a similar thing. You know, I'd known my wife. We were together 37 years. I've seen everything she's produced. We've been kind of a team in many ways. Um, but after she died, you can see the work in a new light. And it's not just the light of nostalgia. It's, it's, it's the light of, it's in the light of, of history. In fact, that nothing else will ever be produced again. And so Herb was there at the National Portrait Gallery. She wasn't talking about these trillium pieces. She was talking about oil paintings, which is not what she worked with Hung on. Um, and I was just absolutely, I wrote her back and I, I didn't think my email was that much of a big deal, but I, I so immediately came to respect more than I did in, a, in an important way, more than I did Hung's, uh, um, Herb's, um, capacity to be open to, to experience that she probably thought she knew enough already you know and to do it in that museum alone all there were hundreds of the rest of us down in the big atrium and she was up there alone having the experience of that kind of grace and humility and i suppose that's religious <coughs> your wife and her respect hung worked very closely with her and very smoothly and um, um, Herb didn't have David's particular kind of ambition, but um, she knew how to keep things steady. And Hung and she became very comfortable working together in the sense that Herb would say, well, here, what about this? And Hung would say, no. Or she'd say, yeah, except take that. That, that, I, I, I'm gonna, we need to do something up in that right corner a little bit differently, or take those flowers out, or here, here's some Chinese characters, add them. So it became a real low-key collaboration, and, uh, and it was really good for the work. When did Herb come on board a trip? I was told 1980. Yeah, I that, that sounds about right. I used to make, so my dad, Richard, here, he used to, the way we got introduced to Trillium was through a painter friend of his, Joseph Raphael, who my dad Joseph wanted, Raphael. <clears throat> who wanted to make prints, and he said, who's your, who do you, who do you, where do you work, where do you make prints, and he handed him the phone, because David was standing right there, and that was 1979 or 80. 79. And then you used to go into South Park, and I would either come in with you, so I was 10, at that time, or 11, and play video games all day. And Herb was certainly there then. Or I would stay home and make prank calls to Trillium um, with my Lily Tomlin operator comedy album. And Herb always picked up the phone. Like, she knew that I was like, I would get on a thing and I would do it for like 15 minutes. And like, Herb always picked up. It was really great. She came out and I'm sure she didn't know who or what. It was all about. Yeah, she came out that was, I don't even know how many years ago, but since then we stayed in touch and just were, uh, worked together with, with cats and tracking cats and taking care of the cats. And her love of the cats in the neighborhood and her own cat too, and she was able to bring to her house. Um, it was just very, very touching. <laughs>